The term unrequited love refers to those relationship situations where you like someone more than they like you. This may occur when you like a friend who has no idea you have feelings for them. This could occur when your boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with you even though you wanted the relationship to continue. Or this may occur when you see a stranger over and over again and you form a strong desire for this person even though they don't know you exist. So in this video, we're gonna talk about five common problems that often lead to unrequited love and five biblical solutions to those problems. Problem number one, you love them so much because you don't know them that much. The solution? Remember the fallen human condition and accept this person was not the perfect one that got away. Ironically, sometimes the worst cases of unrequited love occur in those types of situations where you don't know that person that well. So why is that? Whenever you idolize someone and then you get into a real relationship with them, one of two things usually happens. First, you may end up demonizing them because they let you down so bad. In this case, you move on bitterly and lose all fond feelings for this person. Or two, you get to know them and realize they are imperfect and sinful just like you, but you work through your issues together and you have a healthy relationship rooted in grace. But when you only know someone from afar and you never get that chance to shatter the false image that you've created of this person, that false idea just lingers there and continues to fuel your feelings of unrequited love, imagining that this person's just the perfect one for you, but you can't be with them. In a situation like this, the key is to think biblically. So even though you won't know the exact ways in which this person is imperfect, you can know by studying scriptures, this person definitely is imperfect because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And from personal experience, we know that there's not this magical person out there who just has it all figured out and is better than everybody else in all situations. So you certainly don't need to demonize this person, but you have to accept the biblical truth that no human being, including this person, is the real solution to the deep desire you have for that utmost happiness you're seeking. Problem number two, you have an inner ache you were born with and this disappointing relationship situation is giving you an explanation to your pain. The solution, realize that every ache ultimately points us back to the ache caused by our broken relationship with God and solved only through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have you ever wondered why you're so hurt by someone even though you didn't really know them that well or why some people go into this deep depression when they find out that their crush doesn't have mutual feelings. One explanation to this problem, it's not the only so explanation, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but one explanation is that these people already had an inner ache and they were looking for an explanation to why they felt so bad. When you're sad and feel hurt and you don't have a great way to explain this intense feeling, it can feel like your pain is invalidated, but when you can attach your inner ache to this idea of unrequited love, it can give you an explanation to why you feel so bad inside. The truth is our deepest ache inside is connected to our deepest loss, which is our loss of a pure connection to our heavenly father due to sin. Thus, only when you have a restored relationship with your heavenly father through Jesus Christ, can you find the wholeness you are searching for in all these relationships that keep disappointing you? Problem number three, unrequited love can be romanticized in a twisted way, giving you someone to think about as a solution to your loneliness. The solution, realize the pain you have is due to loneliness and you are using the image of this person as a symbolic placeholder in your desire for marriage. While relationship with God through Jesus Christ is the ultimate solution to the ultimate pain we feel in our hearts, that's not to say that we don't have a real, healthy, good desire for people and that loneliness is because we're lacking that relationship with that person God wants us to marry one day. It's normal and natural to feel lonely before you meet that person 
at a healthy balance. However, sometimes we mishandle that loneliness and try to solve it in unhealthy ways. In a twisted way, we can sometimes come to believe that it's better to hold on to this unrequited love rather than to have no love at all. This is simply not true. By letting someone go who doesn't love you back, you are taking a big step forward toward the person who will love you back. To find the right one God has for you, you will have to let go of all the wrong ones God does not have for you. Problem number four, you don't know how to guard your heart while still remaining open to love. The solution, learn to apply biblical wisdom as you open up more and more to people as there is more and more evidence of their love for you. Unrequited love that lingers longer than you want oftentimes stems back to not guarding your heart properly during that phase where you were interacting with this person. When you awaken love before God desires for that love to be awakened, again, you can get stuck in a much longer season of healing than was necessary. Ironically, we often then make the issue even worse because we then overreact after getting hurt and stay completely closed off towards love in fear of getting hurt like this again. However, because your heart is now closed, the feeling for this person in your past stays trapped. Instead of being able to move on with someone else, you are now closed off and stuck with unrequited love. This is why we have to have a biblical view of guarding our hearts, which is not walling our hearts off. Guarding our hearts is where we take measured and wise risks so that we can truly love and be loved by someone else. Because to have true love, there does need to be an element of vulnerability, but you just have to do that in a wise way where the risk is worth it. When you love someone, you're opening yourself up to being hurt and to hurting this person. But in this vulnerable state, you two can then give and receive love as you treat each other right, even though you could hurt each other if you wanted to. Trust and intimacy are built only when the possibility of betrayal is present. You can't stay overly guarded and erase all possibilities of pain if you want to experience true love with someone. This is why God allows humans to sin. He knows that if he took away our choice to not love him, then he would also be taking away our choice to love him. For true love to be present, it has to be a free choice and unforced. The same is true for us. If you want a healthy relationship, you have to know how to open your heart at the right time. When is the right time? You should open your heart more and more to someone as they show more and more evidence of trustworthiness. If you open your heart fully to someone you don't know that well, you will usually get burned. And problem number five, You've believed the lie that this person was your best romantic option in life. The solution? Believe that God's plan for you is better than your plan for you. Perhaps the most common and powerful explanation to unrequited love is believing this false idea that that one person that you have this unrequited love for was and is your best chance at ever receiving the love that you crave. And now that this isn't there, you feel like there's really no hope for you. Well, the solution is you have to reject that lie because it's not true. If you don't end up with that person, you must trust God's love for you and that he has a better plan for you. If you want more help getting over someone, here's a playlist of videos where I cover that topic from a biblical perspective. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com, and until next time, God bless.